This is my custom built 3D palette extruder print head. And instead of printing with regular filament, it prints directly with the raw material filament is made out of plastic pellets. And these cost 5 to 10 times less despite being the same plastic. And you can also 3D print with sugar and chocolate or basically anything as long as it is in granulate form and can melt. But these print heads are at the moment still very, very expensive and have many problems. But over the course of almost two years now, I'll manage to solve many of them. And the result is this here, a pellet extruder, which is so universal that it can be used on almost any 3D printer. And I will show you in a minute how this is even possible and can be done. But what's more important is that it costs now significantly less than anything comparable to it and is only half the weight easier to use and despite all of this produces a print quality that is astonishing for pellet 3D printing standards. Let me show you what I mean by that. Look, this vase is printed in the plastic PLA and looks not much different from a filament printed vase. But what differs a lot is the cost for this part. If I would have printed it with normal 3D printing filament, it would cost me $4.57. But since I printed it with PLA pellets, I only paid $1.14. This is four times less money. And yet this vase does not look much differently aesthetically from a filament one. Since everybody wants to know the secrets about my pellet extruder, I will show it now in more detail. We're gonna assemble it together. And along the line, I will talk about the common problems that pellet extruders have and how I managed to solve them with some innovative thinking. So these are the parts that make up the pellet extruder. We have some 3D printed, some metal and some standard 3D printer parts and screws. Before we start to assemble it, let me explain in a nutshell how a pellet extruder even works. Unlike filament extruders where you push a plastic string through a heated nozzle and 3D print with it, in a pellet extruder this is achieved by an extruder barrel and an extruder screw that go into each other. Then pellets are fed into the barrel and the screw pushes the pellets with every rotation downwards and retracts them when rotated in reverse. Through a heating block equipped with a standard 3D printer heater cartridge and a temperature sensor that you see right here, we can melt those pellets and just like a regular filament extruder 3D print with. By the same way, it allows you to also 3D print with chocolate, sugar and other materials as long they are in granules form and printable. Now that you know how a pellet extruder works, let's assemble it together and take a closer look at the problems conventional pellet extruders have and how I managed to solve them so that we can 3D print with them. This is important to know because then you understand how much it differs from conventional pellet extruders and why some people in my last video commented that this extruder is a breakthrough. So let's start with the first problem. Pellet extruders are very expensive, but why is this so? One out of many reasons for this is that almost all available pellet extruders out there, which are very few by the way, consist mostly out of expensive CNC and sheet metal parts. We have, for example, a housing that is supposed to hold the extruder together, but however, it consists out of separate metal parts that are screwed together. But making everything out of metal is just <laughs> engineering in easy mode and often results in a relatively expensive and also heavy print head. And this brought me to the question, can't I just throw most of those metal parts into the bin and just 3D print them with cheap PLA? This idea seems so stupid that most laugh at it, since PLA is one of the worst plastics you could use to make a pellet extruder hot end. But after two years of development and a whole graveyard later, I managed to do exactly that. A pellet extruder consisting mostly out of 3D printed PLA parts, which by the way changes everything. With that said, let me introduce you to the 3D printed PLA housing part which is responsible for holding everything in place and doing a bunch of other things. At first, the pellet screw gets attached to the stepper motor with a coupler and then screwed to the housing with four screws. The extruder barrel I showed you earlier is directly connected to the housing with the help of two screws that keep it in place. But wait a moment, PLA directly connected to the hot end? How is that supposed to end well? Well, actually it does end well because of the way how I applied physics here. But only until you exceed 300 degrees Celsius, 
from that moment, I do recommend to print all printed parts in a more heat resistant plastic. Ideally, nylon carbon fiber, since the extruder can reach temperatures up to 350 degrees Celsius. But I'm not sure if it would be better to have only a max temperature of 300 degrees Celsius, but a higher flow rate instead, and would be very, very thankful if you could answer that question in my short survey I linked down in the description below so that I can improve the extruder according to your desires. What I did not mention yet is that this is the naked version of the housing. What does it mean it is naked? For this we need to take a look at the next problem, universability. Most pallet extruders are not really universally usable on most desktop 3D printers despite some of them claiming that. But once you buy one and start to ask how can I mount this to my 3D printer, you are left in the dark. And I'm talking here from experience. Everything good so far. But how can we now attach this print head to almost any 3D printer? Well, every 3D printer has obviously a print head. And this print head is in most cases mounted to some kind of a mounting plate. Let's take a look at the one from the Creality and the 3 v 2 as you can see, the print head was just screwed to a simple plate with some holes. These holes are oriented differently with different 3D printer brands and models, but most of them utilize the same concept, a mounting plate with some holes. And now I show you how you can utilize this yourself to 3D print with pellets. You simply measure the distance of the holes to each other and create a 2D sketch from it. And then you use one simple tool that you have in any CAD program to make your own mounting plate. Then you just put the housing part on top of it and print everything in one piece. Here is your pallet extruder housing with an integrated adapter for your custom or regular video printer made within a couple of minutes. Since it's printed in PLA, which is quite a stiff plastic, it not only ensures a stiff connection to your mounting plate of your 3D printer, but also allows everyone to 3D print all 3D printed parts for the pallet extruder on any 3D printer, which makes it already the most universal pallet extruder <laughs> ever created. And it gets even better. I do already have 14 ready to print adapters for some of the most popular 3D printers from Creality, Anycubic and some other brands for the people that don't know how to make their own. And all these will be for free. If you want me to make an adapter for your 3D printer as well, then let me know what 3D printer you have in my short survey about the extruder, which you find in the description below. Do you see now how all these puzzle pieces start to come together? But my friend, this is just the beginning of what I'm about to show you. So let's continue the journey with the problem of weight. Through replacing most of the metal parts with PLA, we not only significantly reduce the cost of the pallet extruder, but also reduced its weight. But can we reduce it even more? Look, a lot of pallet extruders you see on the internet use a big hopper directly connected to the print head. But this makes it unnecessarily heavy. Some companies try to solve this by implementing an automatic air pressure based pallet feeder. And while such a system does work, it also adds a couple of hundred dollars to the price deck. So how can we get rid of all this, make the pallet feed system even simpler and cheaper? On the housing part is a big hole with a thread and here is a special German conveyor hose also with a thread. And as you can guess, you can screw it into the housing. The end of the special German conveyor hose goes into the exit hole of a 3D printed hopper that you can put on top of your 3D printer and through gravity it automatically feeds pellets to the extruder. And here is a demonstration of how this works in a live scenario. Here's the conveyor hose and here are some PLA pellets. And now I just insert them into the hopper, but first I need to take the lid off. And now you're gonna see how they just fall into the smaller hopper. But there's another huge problem no one talks about. Let's say you loaded two kilograms of PLA pellets into your extruder, but now you change your mind and you want to print with something else. How do you unload your pellets? Usually you have two choices. Experiencing a nightmare trying to get the pellets out there or you just purge all your material and simply waste it. Not really great. But how did I solve this issue? The answer is with a very simple mechanism. Let me demonstrate it to you. 
You just need some sort of a bucket or some kind of container that you put under the extruder. And then there is this little sliding part that you just slide a little bit out and all the pellets are gonna come out of the extruder. And once the main job is done, you pull the rest out and just pull out this little sliding part right here, which releases the last pellets that are directly connected or in the hopper. And you just wiggle out the last of them. I also just shake everything a little bit out so that the last ones come out. And then you just insert all parts back in. And within a couple of seconds, you just unloaded the whole extruder. And now you can just put in new pellets whenever you want. And this is how simple it is. If you, by the way, want to be notified on important updates regarding this extruder and when I release it, then don't forget to add your email in the survey I talked about earlier so that I can message you on important updates. But there's another problem we need to solve. Unfortunately, it is often the case that pellet extruders have a max pellet size limit of 3 or 4 millimeters. And when one single pellet exceeds this limit and tries to enter the barrel, it might jam the whole system which results in a stop of extrusion and one example how this looks like is for instance this picture from a friend of mine who tried to print with normal PLA pellets. But he got this huge stop of extrusions because some bigger pellet jammed the whole system. And I own the same extruder and experienced the same issues. For this reason I designed the pellet screw in a way that it can use all common pellet sizes from 1 to 5 millimeters. Here's a plastic pellet with a size of 5.2 millimeters and when I try to put it into the extruder barrel then you can see that it fits with no problem. This is also great for printing with shredded plastic waste, for example from failed prints, since it takes more effort to shred plastic into 3 millimeter pieces than into 5 millimeter pieces. Let's finish the assembly by adding two cooling fans to it. The last 3D printed part we have here is basically the fan duct. And it just gets screwed to the housing with two screws but it also allows you to mount a leveling sensor like a BL touch for example which is very similar to the one I have right here. Sometimes you have pellet extruders that have hardware like motors or multiple heating elements and this results often in you being unable to connect them to your PD printer. For this reason the Green Boy pellet extruder uses only motors, heaters, sensors and fans that you already have in your 3D printer, which makes it super easy to just <laughs> unplug the ones from your filament printhead and plug in the ones from the pellet printhead without much headache or tinkering. But there is one important question. Do you need a special firmware to run this pellet extruder? The answer is no, I use Marlin, but you can use any firmware you are comfortable with since there isn't much that you need to change anyways because the hardware is the same and also operates in the same way. But how is it possible that I figured this all out on my own within just two years, but the 3D printing industry with their huge engineering teams not even in a decade? Is this some kind of German engineering magic? Or is there maybe a very ugly truth why we have almost no pellet extruders at all in the desktop 3D printing area, despite its huge potential, especially for recycling home plastic and filament waste directly into useful objects. Unfortunately, I have to leave you in the dark with that question since I'm not sure if I am allowed to say it. But anyways, I would be very thankful if you could spare a minute to share your thoughts and ideas about my extruder in the two question survey that you find in the description so that I can improve it according to your desires and release it. That's it for today, until next time and Auf Wiedersehen!